Hi all, welcome back to Guide to SolidWorks and in today's tutorial what we're going to be looking at is how we create the traditional Batman Batarang on SolidWorks. So this should be just some, it's going to be a little bit fun and um, uh, we're going to try and uh, create this model. So let's have a go and I hope you enjoy. If you're new to the channel please subscribe and if you are a returning viewer please hit that bell icon so you get um, notified when i release new content also um, if you can leave any comments at the bottom about how you think the content is or if there's anything you'd like me to have a look at for you in the future please let me know and i'll try and get back to you asap right let's dive in okay so we're going to start the sketch and we'll go on to the front plane oh. Exit that. Let's go on to the front, uh, top plane. Um, start sketch on that plane. Okay, so I'm going to start from the origin and I'm going to set a centre line. And that centre line is going to be the maximum height of my battering, which is going to be 150. Okay, so from there then, I'm going to start this bottom corner and work my way up. So I'm going to take an, an arc. Starting from this position, drop some in there, and we'll create that arc like so. Okay, and from the end of there, <coughs> a line that comes straight across. And now, what I do if I come off that, I've got another line. If I zoom in, if I take my line back to where I started, I'll get that yellow, yellow box around my point away now and it'll turn it to an arc rather than a line so what I want to do is create an arc going in the opposite direction have a play with it until it comes out come on there we go okay so I'm going to create an arc going in the opposite direction like so drop that in there and then I, rather than having an arc this time, I want a line. So I'm just going to drop another line on the end there and bring this up here at an angle until I'm on line with the top of my center line and bring that line across here, like so. Okay, so we've got a tendency there. Now that tendency is Let's have a look what that's related to. It was trying to relate to this circle here. I don't want it to relate to the arc, sorry. I want this tendency to relate to this arc here. Like so there. And I'd also like a tendency between there and there. So I can make them two and have a nice relationship. I'm going to put some sizes to this before I move on to the rest. So let's get an ang my angle or radius of this arc here. So my radius there is going to be 100 and my distance from there to there is going to be 140. Okay. Now I'm going to have the height up from there to my um, origin which is going to be 75 and that drags that up like so. Now if I make this top point here and this point horizontal aligned, then I know I'm in the right sort of area of where I need to be. Put an angle between these two, and that's going to be 35. I'll just start to manipulate this a little bit. Okay, so now it's giving me issues with this. So if I just take that relationship away there, and we've got that arc in place. Now I need the, uh, the radius of that arc there to be 45, so we've got that as 45 now. And my distance out from here to the end, all the way across, is going to be 220, giving me that shape like so. Okay, so let's pull this across, so from here to here. I know that taking me to the same position on the mirror, mirror opposite side is going to be 134. So that takes me up to that point. Now this allows me in here to put the extra shapes in that I want. So I'm just going to zoom in. So we're going to work in this region here now. 
So I'm going to start with an arc, come from here, I'm just going to drop it down there, like so. Okay. And then from that arc, I'm going to create a line that's going to be uh, tangential to that arc. Now at the moment, it doesn't matter where it is, and you can manipulate the angle of that now. And the angle of that is going to be 8 degrees, which will just pull that around. Okay, let's drag that across so it's not miles away. I also want the radius of this arc here, and that's going to be 40 like so. Okay. Now, we've got a lot um, here. It's quite a lot of uh, movement in this section. Uh, so let's start getting the rest of this together. So from the end of here, I want another line. And I'm going to bring this up like so. And then drop it back down over here somewhere. Okay, so we've got that end in place. Now I'm just going to create a offset from that top line to there, and that needs to be 10. Okay, and now we just need to create some angles in place. So from there to there, um, in that sort of angle shape across, is going to be 84. Okay. And then... What that gives me here is a distance from that line around to that line there, which is going to be 160. Now we're at that point, I've just got an arc to put in. So my arc from here to here like so. Now what I want to do is take this point, make it coincidence with my center line and I can put the angle in of that arc now, which is going to be 30 degrees. Okay, so that's just pushing that back slightly now. Now, the position of that arc down to here is going to be 50. And then I want the distance from there to there. Now, that distance is going to be the mirror image position across the other side, which is going to be 24, like so. Okay. Now we've got that in place. We just need to check the definite uh, why this is not fully defined. So So we've not got the depth down of this here. So because it's coming running at eight degrees across there. We want 40 degree angle from there, so we want that and that position to be horizontal across, like so. Just creates that um, relationship across there, like so. Now that that's in place, we are fully defined. So with that being fully defined, I can now mirror this across. So I'm going to highlight everything on that side. Click the mirror tool, so that picks all them lines, and I'm going to mirror about the center line here, and that creates the same shape on the opposite side, like so, and tick across there. Okay, so we've now got that full Batman sketch. So the complexity of the sketch is quite detailed. There's a lot of relationships and dimensions to include in there. So if you are going to go, please, if it if you do make a mistake, really take your time to check over them, the sizes that you're working with, because there are a lot in there um, to follow and keep track of. So just do the best you can. Okay, right, so once you've got all them sizes in place, we're now going to extrude that. So features, extrude. I'm going to extrude that um, by mid plane by, let's say, 5 mil. Okay, and we've got our battering uh, shape. Now, what we have here though is a sharp edge all the way around the outside. So let's put that edging on there. 
The way we go around doing that is using the chamfer tool. So if we go to chamfer, now I'm going to do chamfer distance by distance. And what we're going to do is asymmetric rather than symmetric. Symmetric means it will be the same in the um, going across as it would be going up. So if you take the um, the symbol as your um, example, so D would be the same as D here. What I want is these two Ds here to be different. So one D1, I'm going to have as one set value and D2 as a second set value. So let's take this position here. Now at the moment it's picking up D1 is the distance I'm going back and D2 is the distance I'm coming up. So I want D2 to be 10. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want D1 to be 2.5 as it's half that distance of that battery. I can then follow that all the way around that front face. What have I got there? Let's get everything on the right size. <coughs> there we go. So I'm just going around that front face. I'm just clicking them lines and just making sure that I'm getting all them profiles on that right side. So we've done that one side. I'm just going to tick there. Okay, so once I've got that chamfer on the front face, I'm going to repeat it on the back face. So go to the chamfer tool again. And I'm going to use the asymmetric example again. And I'm going to click on that face. And this time I'm going to swap or flip these around. So it's going to be 10 at the top and 2.5 at the bottom. And I'm just going to follow that again around this inside edge. Like so. And tick there. Now you'll see the completed article in terms of the model. What we just need to finish it off with now is um, adding the material. Now, because of the colour that these are in the original Batman series, I am going to go to my material, edit the material, and I am going to give it a Okay, rather than going through that method, I'll right click on the face, go to the appearance, I'll make the body appearance. Let's go to a gold colour, polished gold, like so. Okay, and we have our finished battering. From there, then, you could just render that up and you will get your finished view. Um, so if we just pop to the render tool, I'm just going to do a final render. Now this will take a moment to render, um, but you'll get a nice image out of here. This is just using the um, SolidWorks render software. And as you can see, as the rendering is starting to develop, um, uh, and finishing off developing, you get something that looks a bit more like your traditional batarang that we get in the movie. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, uh, and hopefully you've learned something from this and if not just try it for a bit of fun um, if you've got any comments that you want to leave over the video please feel free to leave them and if like i say if you're new to the channel please subscribe and i will see you in the next tutorial bye for now